everyone, it's Ben from LearnML. Um, so before we go onto the computer and look at the code, uh, let's first understand what we're dealing with. Okay, so when we're trying to connect to uh, Oanda APIs, there's going to be two main APIs. One is the, the streaming API and the other one's the REST API. Uh, most of the time you'll be working with the REST API. Uh, this is how you interact with your account, get pricing information. However, the streaming API also allows you to stream prices live. Um, so an API has a URL and it also has authentication details um, that you need to pass in. Um, and these authentication details are your personal access token and also the account number. So the, the URL is like the address where the API lives, um, but in order for Oanda to verify that it is actually you, you need to pass in these, these two credentials. Um, and then there's some other things that you need to pass in and this is going to be based on your request. So if you're um, trying to get some historical data, you will need to pass in the instrument, um, the, the start date for the historical data and end date. Um, whereas if you're trying to open a trade, then obviously you need different information. Um, there's also two or, or three types of um, main requests. Uh, get is just for getting information about your account or about price, price data. Um, post is if you're trying to open a trade and put is if you're trying to modify or, or close a trade. Um, there are some other ones, but these are the main three. Okay, let's hop right in. Hi, welcome back. Okay, uh, quick disclaimer. I recommend that you do this with a practice account to start off with. Um, however, the API uh, addresses I've set up here are for the live account. Um, you just need to change these if you're doing this for a practice account. So yeah, first of all, we need to start off by specifying the API endpoints. Um, or the API addresses. So this is for the REST API and this is for the stream API. Maybe I'll zoom in a bit to make it easier. Okay, then you need to specify your access token and your account ID. Access token can be found just by logging in and then going manage API access. And then you can generate uh, one of these tokens under my services. Make sure you keep this secret. Okay, um, and for the account ID, um, you can also find this after you log on and then go to your accounts. Um, okay, so the main things that we, we need are, um, or the main packages is uh, requests and JSON. Requests is to send the HTTP request and JSON is to um, pass the information that you're getting back from the response. Okay, so let's first uh, just get some pricing information for um, uh, an instrument of our choice. So we need to specify the pricing path, and this is simply um, the path to the, the pricing module that we're going to interact with, or to the, the pricing endpoint is called. So if we look at the documentation, the pricing endpoint uh, can be found here. So here it says it's a get request because we're trying to get some information. Um, and then this is the address. Um, in this curly brackets where it says account ID, this is where you'd actually put your account ID. And then we need to go to pricing. And here it says, okay, here are the request parameters. So um, authorization, you need, um, it says here, your, your t uh, bearer token, um, and then some other things, account ID, instruments. Instruments just means the, the currency pair or the uh, market you're looking to get information for. And then there's some other things. Um, then it also says under responses, you'll get a response um, uh, of code 200 if it's been successfully provided and then some other responses for errors. And you can click on these and, and see what kind of um, error you're, you're getting. Okay, so this is our pricing path. Um, okay, for the query, this is now, like, what is the information we're trying to get? So we're going to this, this pricing endpoint and now it's saying, okay, what, what do you want from the pricing? Um, and so what, what we want is to get, let's say pricing information on US dollar, Canadian dollar. Um, and then in our headers, we then specify the authorization. So this is the access token. Okay, now we send uh, a request. So we do requests.get. And then here is the, uh, endpoint, the entire endpoints. So we're going to the API and then we're going to the pricing path. And we pass in our headers and we also pass in the query. And then this is what a response looks like. So 
here you see here's the the price um the bid ask uh the instrument and some other information okay we can also write a, a function to make this easier and to pass the information so if we write this function again we're just um passing in the instrument that we would like then it's uh, specifying the query uh, and then it's sending the request so it's a get request we go to the pricing path uh, or the pricing endpoint we pass in the authorization and we also pass in our query then we we can just pass the information back and this is what it looks like so um, here i've set it up just to get a tuple back of the the time and the price okay so this is actually doing it sort of from scratch but i wanted to have provided this library uh, called v20 and um, it's sort of makes it a little bit easier, but it's a little bit out of date as well. Okay, so first we do a pip install v20, and then we can just import the package. Um, from there, we first need to set up the API. And so for the usual API, we do v20.context. We pass in the API and our access token and the ports. So it's going to be 443 in, in all the cases. Um, and same for the stream API. But this time, the only changes we're passing in the stream API. Okay. Um, and then if we want to get a response, let's say uh, we want to get some pricing information for the dollar CAD. Again, we now just do api.pricing.get. Um, and then from there, we can get the information and it's uh, exactly the same. Okay, now suppose we wanna get some historical information. Let's say we wanna get the prices, um, let's say daily prices from uh, 2019 to 2020. Um, we can also do that. So we need to specify a from time um, and a, a to time and one thing to note is that Oanda requires the time in either a RFC 3339, a representation or a Unix representation. Um, and so here's the, the, start, uh, the start window of, of time and the, the end window. And now for the header, we um, again specify our access token for the authorization so that you can verify it's us. And for the query, we this time have a few more things. We're passing in from, so this is the, the start of the, the pricing information that we want. And then to, which is the end. And then the granularity. So um, we're going to be getting candles back. Um, and so the granularity is going to specify um, the each candle. And so I've passed in the letter D, which is daily um, instrument. Let's go for, for pound yen this time. And now we need to specify the path. And so, okay, here we can then um, just send the, the request. So we go to the API and then we go to the candles path. We pass in the header, uh, header in our query. And now we just write a simple function to, to pass this information and put it in a data frame. So essentially what we're doing is um, we're sending the request um, we get the response and we put the response in here. The response gets to the JSON, finds the, the candles, loops through all the candles and extracts the, the time, the close price, the high price, the low price, the open price, and um, puts these in a list and then sticks it in a data frame. And that's what we have here. And so then we can just plot the closing prices and there it is. Okay, now suppose we wanted to stream prices. Um, I'll just show you what this does. It's actually a Sunday and so the markets are closed. So you'll see what happens. So you will see that you initially get the price. Let me rerun this, it might work a bit better. So you get the, the initial price. So that's the, the price at, at the close. And now you'll get this thing called a heartbeat, meaning that there's uh, no pricing information. And since it's Sunday, the markets are closed, uh, this will, continue for forever until um, the markets reopen. So that'll be around 10 p.m., uh, I think. 
Okay, that's all. If you have any questions, please uh, just comment in the uh, comment section, and we'll get uh, we'll get back to you. Thanks. Bye.